Hey you guys, welcome back to another episode of Prehistoric Companions. It's been a few weeks since I've posted a video. Life has been crazy. I moved away from Colorado. I've transitioned back to New Mexico, Southern New Mexico. I've been getting situated. I've started my new job. It's been a pretty crazy adventure so far. So I just wanna get you guys a little caught up on the what's abouts, what's been happening in my life and try to get back on track here. And I did acquire a new prehistoric companion. So I'm gonna share with you guys that here momentarily. Then my dad and I, we're gonna go check out his beehive. Yeah, he's got a beehive. He's got like 5,000, 10,000, I forget how many bees he has. He has a lot. But we're gonna go see what his deal, what he's got going on with that and seeing how his bees are benefiting the local community here and what he's trying to do with them. trying to put this video together more for my fifth grade students so I give them something cool and interesting to come into class on Monday tomorrow and start the day off with a cool video teaching them something about reptiles and science and bees we've been learning about transfer of energy and ecosystems the Sun being the original source of all energy then the producers plants how they use the sun to make their own food and perform a process called photosynthesis then how herbivores been a benefit from the plants and then carnivores benefit from the herbivores and decomposers all that fun science stuff so i'm putting together bleh, i'm putting together a video today for you guys so check it out so we're gonna get started here my sister and i a little while ago went to a reptile shop here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Cross City Exotics, pretty cool stuff, pretty cool people, awesome animals that they have. Saw a specimen that caught my eye and I couldn't resist, I had to scoop it up. So let's check that out. So this here is a children's python, Antaresia childrenae, Childreni, however you want to pronounce that, scientifically referred to as Antaresia. So this is a non-venomous snake from the family Pythonidae and this species comes from northern half of Australia. It is a nocturnal species and only grows up to about a meter in length, so about three feet. They are brown with dark markings. They make good pets due to their smaller size, their docile temperaments, strong feeding responses, and easy captive care. So I will house this snake in a 10 gallon tank and as it grows, eventually, I'll convert it into a 40 gallon tank or larger so it has lots of space to spread out and do its snake thing. So this type of snake does not require special lighting, nutrient lighting, like the nutrients that you would get from the sun like we talked about last week. That's what plants need to grow big and strong. They need the sun to grow. These guys come out at night. That's why they're called nocturnal. They come out at night to do their hunting. But I'll probably have special lighting, like a low spectrum UV light on it, just in case, because I think all animals benefit from some sort of nutrient lighting. All this little guy needs is a heat pad underneath the tank with a thermostat to regulate the temperature at about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So it doesn't get too hot, but it also stay plenty warm enough so it could properly digest its food. So they should also be kept on substrate. That's the type of bedding that they use. You can use paper towels or newspaper but those things aren't that great to retain the moisture or humidity that they need. Their lungs need moisture, water in the air, humidity. So the substrate that I'll be using is a combination of coconut husk and fine eco-earth. And those two substrates mixed together should provide a really nice bedding for it to live comfortably on and hold the water that it needs for its lungs to breathe. So the humidity range should be around 60% constantly. And when they go into shed, you'll notice their colors become kind of dull, not as vibrant when they start shedding. 
So when that process happens, then you want to bump up the humidity spray in their environment a little bit and bring the humidity up to maybe 70 or 80% so they have an easier time shedding. So this is just a baby. This one was born in May, so it's only about four months old. And right now it's currently eating pinky, little pinkies. So little tiny baby mice, baby rats, and it'll only need to eat once a week. So once a week, one meal, should keep this guy on a steady growth rate. So let me show you what this guy is eating right now. So these are frozen pinkies. They're already dead, they're frozen. Uh, little baby mice. So whenever it's feeding time, I just have to thaw them out with warm water and make sure I treat the water with some Repti Safe so it dechlorinates the water and makes it safe for the animals. Bring their body temperatures up to about 98 degrees and then once they're really warm, then you can feed your snake. So I have a whole bag of little pinkies here and I do frozen thawed because it's safer for both the animals. The little baby mice, they don't have to suffer by getting eaten by the snake. They are euthanized humanely. It's still sad because they're cute, but you know, the snakes are the ones that I'm keeping and they're the ones I have to eat. But if you feed live, you just have to be careful that the snake actually consumes it and the mouse doesn't harm your snake because sometimes they get re really curious and sometimes there have been cases where the mouse or rat will chew up your snake and kill your snake so i believe this is the safest feeding option so this is my children's python i do not have a name for it nor do i know if it's a boy or girl yet usually as they get a little older i'll be able to more accurately determine that. Today, my dad, he has a beehive, actually, yes, a beehive. And we're gonna bust it open and see what kind of activity is going on inside the hive and show you guys what these herbivores are doing and how they're cultivating their honey or producing their honey and the whole setup that he has going on. It's super fascinating. So we're gonna get suited up. We're gonna go check them out and see how they're benefiting the local neighborhood. All my parents' neighbors saying that the bees have really helped their gardens because the bees will go around and collect nectar from the flowering vegetables that they have and help the vegetables grow and pollinate all the other plants. So they provide a vital component in nature. We need our bees because without our bees, we wouldn't have food. Alrighty, here is the beehive. My dad is going to put on his bee suit, so we'll check that out here in a second. We're gonna open up the bee house here. Inside here are all kinds of bees. They're building honeycombs and producing honey. They're gathering nectar and energy that they use to make their own food from all the plants and our neighbors, all their flowering vegetables. So they're making honey using the nectar they co they collect from the producers, right? So when my dad gets back from putting on his bee suit, he's going to explain a little bit more about the processes and things that are happening in here. We're going to fill this apparatus up with uh, some stuff, some dry sticks and things that burn easy, and we're gonna smoke them out so that calms them down. It doesn't really put them to sleep. It doesn't hurt the bees, but it kind of mellows them out because we're going to be tearing apart this whole house here. And they might get a little not happy with that. So we got the bees right there and check out my parents' garden. They got all kinds of awesome vegetables, zucchini, squash, peppers, grapes, tomatoes, you name it, they grow it. And the bees are helping all this awesome plant growth. It's like a jungle back here and the bees love it. All right, here's my dad all suited up. He's lighting, what's that thing called? Smoke torch? The smoker. So we're gonna it smoke. basically calms the bees. And it makes them, makes them think there's a fire and they gorge them, they go down to the hive and they gorge themselves in honey. So they can go to build a different hive if this one is decimated. <laughs> So it's probably full of honey. I got some cool bee facts for you guys. Check it out. Bees have five eyes. They are insects, so they have six legs. They can fly up to 20 miles per hour. The queen can lay up to 2,000 uh, eggs in a day. That's a lot of eggs. If they lose a stinger, that means they'll die. And uh, Bees have been around for 30 million years. Bees, the average beehive can have about 50,000 bees. That's a lot of bees. 
Let's see, the foragers must collect nectar from nearly two million flowers to make about one pound of honey. That's a lot of flowers. Bees communicate primarily through chemicals they produced called pheromones. And bees are super important because they, they pollinate approximately 130 agricultural crops in the United States, like flowers, fruits, fibers, nuts, and vegetables. So this is a new one. So these are the, look at this, all honey. Oh wow, you guys see that? Look at that. That's a lot of honey. That is a lot of honey. So that one looks good. So what happens is the queen, the, the outer frames they call them, are typically where the honey goes. As you get to the center is where you'll see brood and pollen. There's another one, loaded. Yummy. They've been busy because this is this is new. I have lots to eat. So how have the bees been benefiting all your guys' neighbors around here? And vegetable yield and growth production, even in your guys' own garden. Yeah, they pollinate. Uh, our garden's doing great because of the bee activities. And what's nice is not only do we get the vegetables, we get we get it back in the honey. So we get a double double whammy he's out typically you won't find the queen on the honey frames but once I start getting up to the pollen and uh, the brood then I must really start looking for the queen but this is another one jam-packed in honey it's a lot of bees about how many bees do you think are in this colony and I would be guessing but when I bought it three years ago it had seven pounds of honey, or seven pounds of bees. Okay. Lots of bees, these bees, the broods, they're organizing all the larvae. Right now we're trying to find full. the female. There's another full honey full panel. Honey so I hope you guys learned something cool about bees and bee production and their importance in ecosystems and how they benefit uh humans and all the other producers in an environment if you see them don't worry i'm out here i'm not even wearing a suit and i'm not getting stung at all they're all over the place so just remain calm and just let them continue doing their bee thing it'll be okay gotta respect them respect the bees so hope you guys enjoyed today's video hope you guys learned a lot thank you to all my subscribers and other reptile peeps out there on youtube class Hope we're going to dive into the other lesson plans that we got going on today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned a lot. So until next time, everybody, hopefully we'll start getting back on track and start posting regularly. So stay tuned. I appreciate you guys. Have an awesome week. Be safe. And until next time, guys. Peace.